ended yesterday. It was a powerful time when Pastor E. A. Adeboe lifted up his suit. That God said to him, it was a very powerful testimony. I, um, you know, very, very powerful. He said, God said, he should lift up his suit and we all should. I say we all because I was online. Get a material as contact for the anointing for double. You didn't watch it? Now, I didn't have any physical material thing as at that time. No cloth material. But I lifted up something. And he said, as I drop the suit, pick, pick up that material, put it on your head. You know, the, the, the ways of God, they are mysteries. He now shared the testimony of how God said he should go and sow a vada. Very big one. He said, so he sowed it. He prayed we are in that Agbada and God said he should bring it to a congress. One of those past congress. That everybody should just touch. That they shouldn't hold. Just touch and go back. He said one man said if touching we solve other people's problem. I think my problem is more than just the touch. That he needs to grab a cloth. So the man grabbed the cloth for some time and left. Only for the power of God to hold him, he started screaming. People thought it was a joke till the next day. Until they had to look for Baba, he now came, he now came to the person. What happened? He said, I grab when you say we should touch. <laughs> Tell your neighbor the power of God is real. Yeah. I will tell you why I'm telling you this at the summary of this uh, short charge. I come again. The power of prayer and fasting. We are going to look at three categories of people that wrote on the power of the, on the power of prayer and fasting to attain results, to get results. Three categories. Now, you know I'm teaching you this. I want you to believe in what you have just finished doing. You know, today is the last day of this prayer and fasting. If you did it faithfully the way I did mine, and I'm sure my wife did her own because we did it together. Now, if you are sure you're involved in this prayer and fasting, I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. Now, I don't want you to be religious about these things. You do get me? I don't want you to be religious about these things. I want you to be spiritually minded about it. Now, let's look at the first case. Esther chapter 4 verse 16 and verse 17 Esther chapter 4 verse 16 and verse 17 go and gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night and day. I also and my medians will fast likewise. And so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. Follow this. And if I perish, I perish. 17. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded. Now, only those of us that have read this Bible passage before that will really understand what 
happen. Haman, that happens to be the right hand man of King Ahasuerus, as at that time, succeeded to make the king to sign a decree. Now, when the king now signed the decree, listen, he signed the decree with an irrevocable law, a law that can never be changed. Now, that's a law that existed as at that time in Babylon. That when somebody's a, a, a decree is made, with that law, it can't change it. Now, that was the same kind of law that was used in the days of Daniel. That they used, uh, when they said nobody should pray, if anybody should pray, should be cast to the lion's den. Even when the king discovered it was Daniel, his best man, he couldn't re re uh, reverse it because it was an irrevocable law. Am I communicating? Now, it was the same law that was used to, to remove Queen Vasti. The same irrevocable law. It was the same law too that was used, you know, to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the uh, 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 furnace of fire. The same law. So here, there was a law that once a year, that this particular season in the year, the king will go on a special retreat. If the king does not send for you, you cannot come to him. You will only be allowed to come to the king by request. Now, don't forget. But before the king went into that uh, retreat, Mordecai, uh, Haman had succeeded to persuade the king that, ah, oh king, see, there are some people in our, in our country. Reduce the volume a little bit. There are some people in our country, they are Jews. They are not part of us. They are growing. They are many. They are prosperous. Sir, please, can I receive your permission to wipe away these people entirely. And sir, if you give me your permission, we will pay so, so and so amount into the treasury of the king. And the king now agreed. And they signed it without irrevocable law. When Mordecai had, he said, thank God, Esther is the queen. Maybe she will speak on our behalf, you know. They went to Esther, and Esther said, sir, you may not understand. Go back and tell my uncle that I have not seen the king for some time, and he has not sent for me. And there is this particular law that is not reversible. That if the king does not send for you and you decide to show up, the penalty is death. Then Monica uh, sent another message to uh, Esther. If you think you will not arise at this particular time, then God will raise help from other source. But want you to know that you yourself will not be safe. You know what Esther now did? He said, okay, we know that the law cannot be changed. The king has not sent for me. But you know what we are going to do? Let's fast and pray. Now, fasting and prayer is a principle that moves God. So, the people now decided. Everybody, they chose three days. Everybody. And they all involved in that fasting for three days. Now, at the end of the third day, let's jump to Esther chapter 5 from verse 1. At the end of the fast, now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gates of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, can you see? The queen standing in the court that she obtained what? Favor. In his sight. Instantly the king saw her. The Bible says, he obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Verse 3. Then said to the king, sorry, then said the king unto her, what will thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? Now look at the clause. It shall be given thee to what? To the half of the kingdom. Can you see? Esther knew that there was a standing law, but Esther had the understanding of the power of prayer and fasting. Now it's a pity that so many of us, we just fast and pray religiously. So many Christians don't understand the power behind it. 
We just fast and pray religiously. And that's why we don't get results. I always tell people, I've said scripture, the one we read, I think it was on Saturday, the evening meeting, you didn't join me online. I showed you we had two blind men came to Jesus. Jesus asked them two questions. What was the first one? Do you believe I can heal you? You know, they were shouting, uh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. He didn't, he didn't start praying. He just asked them first question. Do you believe I can heal you? Now, the same thing I'm asking you. Do you believe in the power of prayer and fasting? Some don't believe. Some just do it religious. Don't do it religiously. Especially when it is an instruction like this. I tell you, I did this fast like if I didn't do it, I was going to die. That was how I did this 12 days of glory. Now, we did it because we want to use it to settle the coming year. Now, in the natural, listen, in the natural, some countries have signed their budget for next year. But you know, our own in Nigeria, I think it used to come out in April or May. Now, and these budgets are men sat down. They, they made budget over their country. We are going to do this, do this, do this, and they, they passed it to the Senate. The Senate went through it, you know, sent it back to the executive. The executive now said, okay, since the Senate has approved, let's come to announce. Then they start to execute. Now, as Christians, we are also doing spiritual budgeting by prayer and fasting. Now, what are we doing? Saying, Lord, we know you have the capacity. You have seen next year that we have not entered already. Because the Bible says, you know the end from where? From the beginning. Now, even we, we don't know the beginning. So, why are we fasting and praying? Lord, go ahead of me. Lord, say two things ahead of me. Lord, 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 and things like that. That's why. But if you don't believe in what you have done, listen, you have just wasted the fast. I've shared Esther's testimony to jack up your faith. I want you to believe that marvelous hell will be made available to you throughout 2023 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Believe it. You know why you should believe? Because you have fasted and prayed. Now, for you to know how much Esther believed, the moment she finished praying the third day, she stood up, took her bath, changed her clothes, and started going to see the king. So Esther is the first person I have just come to show you. I wrote here, beloved Esther and the Jews. So where am I? Esther and the Jews, yes. They changed an irrevocable law when they engaged the principle of prayer and fasting. Now, second example, Jonah chapter 3, 1 to 10. The men of Nineveh. Or can I say the people of Nineveh. They in their own case. They were destined for destruction by the Lord. Show me Jonah chapter 3. From verse 1. I said from verse 1 to verse 10. Jonah 3 from verse 1. Now it says. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying. Let's go. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Can you see everything was according to instruction? Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be what? Overthrown. This is what God said you should go and preach. In forty days time, Nineveh shall be destroyed. And we know the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. Have And he does not have respect of any, for anyone. I will say, uh, 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 I said it, so because of that person, I won't say it again. No, he, pro he proclaimed. So the people of Nineveh, look at what they did. Believed God and proclaimed what? A fast. 
Don't do fasting as if somebody forced you to do it. Don't do fasting as if it's just one of those things. Do fasting with understanding that it's a principle that moves God. So, the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. You know what sackcloth means in today's day? Is they humbled themselves. In your season of fasting, you humble yourself. In the season of fasting, you are focused with the heart to serve God. In this season of fasting, sometimes you know you are fasting and you are abusing people, you are fasting and you are fighting, you are fasting and you are stealing, you are fasting and you are no no no. Season of fasting is a time to show sober reflection. So they put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For what came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him. And covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. You know why? What it means to sit in ashes? I'm just dust, Lord. Who am I? I'm not sitting in a royal throne. I'm just, it's a form of humility as well. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, can you see? Nor flocks, taste anything. Least, let, sorry, let them not feed nor drink water. Even the compulsory that their, their animals should fast. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Which means when you fast, you need to pray. There must be a reason for your fast. Let them turn everyone from his evil ways, which means when you fast and pray, there should be repentance. And from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fury anger that we perish not? Verse 10. I love this. Let's read verse 10 together. One, two, and three. Let's go. And God saw, wait, wait. What did God see? Their works. What was their works? Fasting, praying, humility, and repentance. He saw four things. And God saw their works. Can you see that? Your works can move God. So when you see somebody fasting and praying, don't, 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 don't remove it, we'll come back to it. Don't think he's wasting his time more. He was fast. They were all everybody, including their beasts. They were fasting. They were praying. They were seeking God's face. Lord, Lord, look upon us with mercy. That's why at times, eh, I used to look at some of our members. I'm sorry to say this. Do you know that it is most of the people that have serious problems that don't know how to fast and pray in our church? There's one brother like that. Because of him, I told him. Because uh, I've been trying to help him out of Nigeria. The first one I did, I compiled all the documents. I told my family members abroad. They agreed. They sent letter of invitation. I compiled everything together. I paid his, our, I gathered money for his visa fee. As they wanted, we wanted to go, there was a problem in that country. And they, they decided to withdraw their embassy from Nigeria. And it was like that for almost six months. We waited. Then while we were doing that, an agent came to me and said, Pastor, I don't know. Do you have anybody that can go to Canada? I have some documents I can package. but I won't take anything, Pastor. Let that person just go and pay visa fee. So I quickly called him. I said, bro, there's an opportunity. So the man came. We paid visa fee. Got that document. We don't know what happened again. That was when coronavirus struck. All embassies closed. When Corona came down, one of us, uh, Pastor Hulu, just called me, Papa. I said, What's it? He said, Sir, there is a redeemed church in America. They needed they need a keyboardist. 
and they need one seriously. I said that I have one of somebody that I've been processing to travel. I don't know whether they would like him, but he has been a keyboardist for about 20 something years. They said, okay, I should tell him to come. I paid his transportation. He went to Afe Babala University. He said they should test him at the chapel. They tested him at the chapel. He played very well. They did Zoom uh, conference call. He was playing. The church over there was watching him. They said, that's who we need. Is he married? He said, no. They said they don't want anybody that will even come home quickly. They don't want somebody that the wife is in Nigeria. That they will now begin to say, hey, after one year, I want to go home. They want somebody that will settle in America. You know, it was clear. He went for three interviews. Then the man called. The pastor happens to be a pilot. He now called. He said, get yourself prepared. I'll be coming to Nigeria so so and so day. And by the grace of God, I'll fix your visa. We'll be going together. Lo and behold. He got to Lagos. As the pastor saw him, that was the end of it. They stayed together for like some hours. He followed the pastor around, visited so many places. The pastor now gave him 5,000 and said, I'll call you. He has not called back till now. Almost one year. Imagine, I now put him in fasting. I said, see, I want to go 40 days. We'll be breaking every day. Bro, join me. Ha. He said, pastor, I will join you. I will join you. There's no problem. In one of the days of the fast, I came to the church. He was on the altar. I thought he was praying. I now said, let me even see him at the altar. You know what he was doing? He was eating, eating bread and beans. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he, I now call him bro. How long have you been eating bread and beans? He said, Would you do Ah. Muni. You know, I look at him. I say, bro, bro, I to show you the money. That was how I removed my hands completely from his case. Up till now, he's still walking around. Ma? Why you want to eat? I only I want to eat the bread and beans. Ah. So, look at that. God was moved. Prayer and fasting are works. Show me. That moves God. That's why I see, don't let food deprive you of the fruit of the tree of life as it did to Adam. That's, that's the problem of so many. Look at how they changed the mind of God. Let's, let's go on. I said I want us to read together. Enlarge it please. One, two, three and let's go. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil will ways and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Do you know that because of this thing that God did, Jonah was angry with God. The prophet of God was angry. God, I know you. I know you. I know you won't destroy them. But look at what God saw. I want you to believe that what you have done these 12 days of waiting upon the Lord, you will see the results in 2023. Let's take one more before we begin to pray and summarize. Mark chapter 9. The topic is the power of prayer and fasting. Mark chapter 9, 28 and 29. Mark chapter 9, 28 and 29. And when he was come into the house, 
His disciples asked him privately, Master, why could we, why could not we cast him out? I didn't want us to do a long read. That's why I just brought these two verses. Verse 29. And he said unto them, you see this kind can come forth by nothing. But what? Prayer and fasting. Can you see? Now, and what was the case of that man? He had several cases. He could not speak. He was possessed with a spirit that robbed him of speech. The Bible says anytime that spirit grips him, it will knock him down to the floor. He will begin to foam from the mouth. And he came to the disciples. The uh, disciples did everything they, they knew to do. The spirit didn't leave. But when Jesus came, he said, you spirit, get out of this man. The spirit went out. Then the disciples came and said, Master, wait. What did you do? Because all the things you did physically is what we also did. We commanded it out in your name. It didn't go. Then Jesus now said, do you know that this kind does not respond to anything except you pray and fast? So prayer and fasting is a spiritual principle that moves God. That's why anytime there is an issue in your life that you see that this is an issue that is, does not respond to natural laws, you know what you should do? create time to be with God in prayer and fasting. In fact, that's why we have that level church. It's supposed to be a retreat center. That you look around, it's like, I don't know, I just need to be, to just have time with God. There is nothing that says you cannot come to leave the city, go down there. Wait upon the Lord, two, three days. You will see that God will be moved by your works. So prayer and fasting is a principle. And when Jesus our Lord was going, in fact when he came, before he left, the Bible says, some people came to see him. They said, Master, we discovered something about your disciples. We see that the disciples of John the Baptist, they are always fasting. But your own disciples are always eating. Jesus smiled. He said, as long as the bridegroom is still around, there will be reason to eat now. But when the bridegroom is taken away, can you see? He has been taken away. He has moved. Now when he's beside you, you can just say, hey, Jesus, oh, come and handle this for me. But now he has gone to heaven to pray a place for me and you. He said, then, they will fast. You see what prayer did in the days when... Peter, Peter was arrested in Acts chapter 12. You saw what prayer did. The church prayed, the Bible says, without ceasing. They kept praying without keeping quiet. I love history a lot. I love especially church history. I was going, listening to uh, from one of our faith fathers how the first miracle of the dead coming to life at, uh, from this uh, CAC fathers happened at Koye just straight. And when they were telling me, I remember my mother-in-law, that's my wife's mom, told me that, she said she was there when it happened. The woman was pregnant when she died. And Apostle Ayodhili Babala and his team, they surrounded the woman, they prayed for nine hours. Non-stop. It was at the ninth hour that the woman came back to life. How many people can pray nine hours now? Nine hours now. You mean not tell one hour. And the reason is because today's Christians, we don't want to create time for spiritual things again. Our phones will not allow us. You hear, this is a generation where you'll be praying and you'll be answering call. Yeah, ba, 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 Hello? Hello? Yeah, okay, okay. This is a generation where you will be in the presence of God and you are still browsing. Now, we are in a generation now where you see that even when the pastor is preaching in the church, eh, somebody will sit beside you and be contradicting what the pastor is saying so that you won't believe. You know, that was what that man, bad Jesus did, that made Paul to curse him. 
lay hold on the principle of prayer and fasting. No matter the case, God will respond to it. Do you understand? So why did I, why did I preach this to you? I preach it for two reasons. Number one, so that you will believe in what you have done. What you have done these 12 days, don't see it as one of those things. Apart from our maybe three days, first three days of the month, before we have a lengthy fasting like this, you know it's still going to be wet. September. Apart from our first three days in the month that we do usually. Except if the Lord now comes up and says, Son, tell my people, everybody should be on fast this season. But see, don't be joking with the, prayer of, the, the power of prayer and fasting again. Some of us have shared testimony in our church before that they had issues in their home and their work that, that faced them. And husband and wife decided to say, let's fast and pray. And God showed up. It's a principle. Believe in it. The Lord will fight for you. He will do the fighting. You will enjoy the victory. In the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Shagadabas kendelebo sataya gadabas. Ringadabas sataya gadabase. Today is the last day we will not be praying much prayers. I will only lead you on praying three prayers that has to do with the end of the year. Then the last one we have to do with December. Now, the first prayer you are going to pray. I led one prayer this morning online. From the book of Jonah, how the people cast Lot. If you have watched it, and Lot fell to Jonah, and they say, "Are you the reason why there was there is this great storm against our ship?" He said, "Yes." But before they cast Lot, you know they have wasted all the goods on board. You tell the Lord, you say, "Oh Lord, lead me this end of the year." away from evil and disaster and to where my favor and opportunity is waiting for me shall we begin to pray let's begin to pray begin to ask for the leading of the Lord Father lead me this end of the year in the name of Jesus direct my steps oh God Lord to where my favor is waiting for me where opportunities are waiting for me in the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Lead me away from evil. Far from evil, oh God. Far from disaster. Begin to pray. Ragadaba Shagadaba. Are you praying? Are you praying? Lead me far away from disaster, oh God. Far away from disaster, oh God. Far away from evil, oh God. Far away from pain. Far away from trouble. Begin to pray for yourself. In the name of Jesus, Basata, this end of the year, I ask for your hand to direct my steps. Let your hand direct my path. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Begin to tell the Lord, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and amen. You are going to pray that this end of the year, whatsoever the wicked has planned to make me end this year in shame, Lord, I cancel it every plan of the wicked to make me end this year in shame to make me end this year in pain father lord i reject it in the name of jesus shall we begin to pray ah my god and my father i pray every plan of the wicked to make me end this year in shame in tears in bitterness in trouble lord i cancel it. i cancel it in the name of jesus begin to pray yeah god begin to tell the Lord I cancel it O God I cancel it O God the Bible says it shall not stand neither shall it come to pass every plan of the wicked to make me end this year in shame Lord I cancel it every plan of the wicked to make me end this year in bitterness Lord I cancel it begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray 
Begin to pray. Ragada basenele, shagada basenele bos. Are you talking to the Lord? Yagada basse. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And Amen. Quickly, you tell the Lord. Everyone owing me favor, owing me opportunities meant for me this year. Bugba, I want to Jamie Lori. Tojake or doing lo ye can yon die for me. If be keep be tombawa. Oh Lord, arrest their heart. Lord, touch them and use them for me. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to pray. Are they to sign your documents? Begin to tell the Lord. Everyone owing me favor. Yagada barabas. Owing me opportunities. Lengada barabas. Lenge de boss. Father Lord, wherever they are. Lord, touch them. Arrest their heart. Begin to use them for me. This year, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I want us to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Rima baba bas. Shagada basanda yaraba. Baseke ne maskanda yaraba skene. Shagada bara. Ringo yaraba skene. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to the Lord. My Father, my God, wherever they are, Touch and use them for me. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed and amen. Now begin to ask for last minute miracle. Miracle of the end of the year. Father, Lord, I ask, release to me. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to pray. I ask for the miracle of the end of the year, oh God. Ah, Iyanutio, we all do. Oluwa, you die for me. Oluwa, you die for me. Begin to pray. Rababa Sakayara, Shagada Basse, Lenge de Gedes, Basata Yagadaba, Lenge de Bosa, Lord, miracle of the end of the year, in the name of Jesus, miracle of the end of the year, in the name of Jesus, miracle of the end of the year, Lord, Basata Yagadaba, Shangada Baraba, Basse, begin to ask for it, 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 begin to ask for it. Are you praying? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Now, beloved, do you know that today being the last day we fasted for December? Now, and on our team, we have December. I have reasons to dance. So, December, we must have what? Reasons to dance. We are going to say a decree. December 2023 shall be a month that I will have several reasons to dance in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy now. Begin to prophesy now. December 2023, I prophesy. I, I name you in the name of Jesus. You are the month that I will have several reasons to dance. Several reasons to dance. You are my month of dancing. It shall not be a month of loss. It shall not be a month of tears. It shall be a season for me to dance. 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 Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Ragada basenele bosh. Balagada bas. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now lift up your plans. Lift up your plans. I have eight minutes more. Your plans for 2023. Yes. Lift it up. You forgot. If you forgot, have it in your mind. Hmm? Your mind too is a diary on its own. But when you get home, go and put it on paper. Do you get me? So you will not be feeling bad. Ah, maybe God cannot answer your prayer. He has answered your prayers. I want you to know that. Uluwa. 2023 you know I told you your plans should not only be natural 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 you should have spiritual plans how well do you want to serve God in 2023 do you still want to be a bench warmer do you want to be a worker it should be in your plan. Now lift those plans up. 